Good evening everybody, thank you very much for joining. This side Rahul here and this time again we are covering a video on the interest rate hedging. But the topic which we are covering is the interest rate collars. And this is again a very beautiful topic, right? Here what are we doing that we have a party which is Chase New York on the both side. What is a collar? Like you have a range forward. Here we are assuming it to be a zero cost collar. We actually need to price it using Thomson Reuters or Bloomberg, right? So we are assuming to be the zero cost caller. Let me write here like that. It is a zero cost caller. So what Chase is doing, Chase is having an asset which is MBS pool, mortgage backed security pool of $10 billion, where the tenure is 10 years. Chase also do have a, another pool which is VIX bonds, volatility index bond, which is again on the floating. It is again 10 million. Both are linked with a single underlying and that underlying is known as LIBOR. Three months LIBOR and that underlying is known as LIBOR. Three months LIBOR. So both are floating. So what Chase is doing, Chase is creating a collar. In this collar, one side they turn out to be a buyer of a cap. One side they turn out to be the seller of a floor. So here it is Chase who is selling the floor, floor seller, here they are buying the cap. Once they are buying the cap, the seller is Goldman Sachs. And once they are selling the floor, the buyer is Credit Suisse. Because Goldman Sachs is also having a pool, which is of floating liability, say MBS. And Credit Suisse would also have a pool, suppose VIX bonds. Pool profile is matching between them two. You already understand that uh, cap is nothing but once it will go higher you, you will uh, receive and floor if it get lower then you need to pay. So the payoff profile would happen like that. So cap payoff would be index minus strike into notional into base, basis count right we are assuming basis count as actual by 360 floor notional sorry for floor payoff would be strike minus index into notional into basis count Now let's take all three cases. Suppose the three months LIBOR turn out to be 10%. Sorry, we are taking a 2.75% swap rate. So here, uh, let's take that here they have kept it at, uh, here the cap is at ATM which is 2.75% which is ATM and here it is turn out, turn out to be in the money. So here that turns out to be say uh, 2.15%. 2, uh, 2 Assuming 3 months LIBOR turn out to be 3%. 3%. Chase is the cap buyer. 3 months LIBOR is 3%. Now they will get some funding. Here it is greater than the floor. So there is no payment which is required by the floor. Because of course the floor buyer, the floor buyer, it is, sorry, I just wrongly wrote it. This is not a cap buyer. This is a floor buyer. Floor buyer is getting 3% and he capped at 2.15%. So there is no funding, don't pay, no payment which is required. Don't note carefully that we are assuming it to be zero cost. So whatever premium which you are paying, which is minus P, because cap you pay premium, here you will receive premium. So it is going to be the zero cost. So don't forget that. If that turn out to be 3%, so net payoff at the rate 3% would be of the cap, which is 3% minus 2.75% into 10 billion. Three months we assume 91 divided by 360. So our total payout would be
6.31 million. Let us check again. Six point three two, which Chase will get. So I am writing Chase plus. Suppose the in LIBOR turned out to be uh, one point six percent. Now no cap funding would be happening, but floor funding would be happening. So at one point six percent, it would be. 2.15 minus 1.6 into 10 billion into 91 divided by 360. That is roughly 13.9 million. Oops. 13.9 million would be Chase minus. Here Chase would be receiving from Goldman. Here Chase is paying to Credit Suisse. Because they are the floor seller and they are the floor buyer. Ultimately, you are able to create a collar. The only way you would be losing if interest rate would be fall suddenly. And interest rate is not going to be fall suddenly. So today speaking, speaking today, if we are assuming that Federal Reserve is all set to hike the rates, then it is predominantly important for us, then it is predominantly important for us to understand that we should create a caller. How we should create a caller? We should take little out of the money here and we should be taking little at the money here. And believe me, if you would be creating that tranche, as a bank you would never lose. As a bank, you would definitely not going to be lose. You always going to be gain. This is how you can create uh, interest rate collars. You can create any pool. Of course, if you want, you can create the synthetics also. Synthetics in the right. You have a 10 billion pool. You hike this to uh, 15 billion. Here you have 10 billion. You hike this to 15 billion. So that uh, synth uh, synthetic or the collateri uh, collateralization you can done. So this is about interest rate callers before winding up just to tell you that yesterday and today we did with several things interest rate caps, interest rate floors, interest rate callers, interest rate participation caps and reverse which is the dollar or oh sorry my mistake which is reverse dollar participating uh, reverse dollar participating swap. With these, we would be launching more videos on uh, interest rate and I hope you finding this video in a beautiful way. Thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful time ahead. Thank you.